Political maniacs. Take one, here's how it works. We're gonna tell you about two of the craziest moments that happened this week in politics on the 20s of each hour. Your assignment, if you choose to accept it, listen to both and tweet in who that maniac of the week is. As always, a little disclaimer, Richard has no idea what we're talking about. None. So we're gonna bring it to him rapid fire right now. Boom. Tweet us at Fowler Show. Tweet us. Follow Richard, Richard A. Fowler. Get in now while you still can, Richard A. Fowler at 27K followers. If you wait point for one. 27K.1 followers, if you wait for another couple of months, who knows, 29, 28, 30. 27.2. .1. Anyway, folks, your first political maniac, Roy Moore, Alabama GOP Senate candidate. He has some spicy takes on preschool. Roy Moore once compared preschool to Nazi-style indoctrination. That's right, there's Republicans seem to not find something that they don't call government fraud, waste, and abuse. Many states and localities are looking to expand the availability of preschool because it's been proven to be very helpful for children. But Alabama It makes America great. It, it's MAGA, right? MAGA. MAG. There's MAGA. No There's no again, right? Oh Alabama GOP Senate, Senate candidate Roy Moore apparently believes that this push is misguided and could result in the Nazi-style indoctrination of America's children. Okay, so this comes from an op-ed that he penned on the conservative site WorldNet Daily saying that preschool was, quote, detrimental to children in our country. That's right. Is that the first person that said that preschool is bad for kids? Just read the, I want to actually read the, read the you excerpt. You want the quote? Okay, so here's what he had to say. Any attempt to extend government-controlled education to pre-kindergarten children is another unjustifiable attempt to indoctrinate our youth. He added this. Why, then, do social liberals like Hillary Clinton push so hard for the expansion of preschool programs? Perhaps they understand the truth of Proverbs 22.6 better than most parents. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. When the mind of a young child is subjected to state control before fundamental concepts and basic beliefs are formulated, the child is much more likely to learn a liberal social and political philosophy with the state as his or her master. Creation and God-given rights are more easily replaced with evolution and government-granted rights. Totalitarian regimes of those like Adolf Hitler and Joseph Stalin know well the value of a youth core. And Hans Schem, leader of the Nazi Teachers League, once observed, those who have the youth on their side control the future. Richard Fowler, what's your, uh, what's your opinion on this controversial hot take? Are we living in an alternate universe? Did he really say that? Yeah, this is uh, written down from an article that actually exists, right? So, so what irks me, so... Tell okay. Me, tell me about this, Richard. Please explain to me. Uh, maybe I'm just tired, Mayor America, and maybe this has been a long week. But what really irks me... What really irks me about... Ooh, what really irks me about people like Roy Moore, and I hate to use the word people like, but Roy Moore and this conserva Christian conservative right movement, so the people who believe we're Christian conservative right, like we're the Christian evangelical conservative right, is how they twist and flip and like use the Bible scriptures as Play-Doh to make... Right to make things work for them. And because I don't really think they understand the trauma that they cause people when they flip and mold the scripture for their benefit. So the greatest commandment, the greatest commandment in the Bible is to love your neighbor as yourself. It's the greatest commandment. It doesn't matter if your neighbor is gay, it doesn't matter if your neighbor's straight, it doesn't matter if your neighbor's white, it doesn't matter if your neighbor's black, it doesn't matter if your neighbor's poor, it doesn't matter if your neighbor's rich, it doesn't matter. But these individuals, Roy Moore, James Dobson, Francis Perkins, the, the, there's a long list of them. They like to mold and flip the Bible to make it seem as though like there are those people over there and they're wrong and because we disagree with them you must hate them 
And that really bothers me. As somebody who grew up in the church, right, I spent my whole life in the church. And to the reason why I don't go, and I, don't get me wrong, I am a, I, when I, people, when I tell people I'm a Christian, they're shocked by it, Rich. People are like, oh my God. And I'm like, you, because I'm like, you don't know me, right? Like, you don't know me. He will tell you I'm a Christian. He spends more time with me than more people, most people do. And I pray more than anything else. Am I wrong? No, you're right. Right? But people are like, why don't you go to church? Why? I'm like, the reason why I cannot walk and step foot into a ch some churches, not all churches, a lot of the churches is because of that type of dogma. This ideal that because I'm gay, all of a sudden, I'm no longer your neighbor. Right. And you see me through these different lens and, and you, and, and it, like, because I'm gay, I'm, I'm imperfect. Right? But what the Bible says also is, is that everything I made, he says, you are perfectly and wonderfully made. So what they like to do is they like to take these one or two scriptures out of the Bible and they like to make it work for them and then people follow them. So let me be very clear. Let me be very clear, and I know this is a maniac, it's supposed to be funny, but let me be very <laughs> clear tonight. If you're watching this program and you're African American and you believe some of the hate that's spewed by people like Roar Moore who believes that all homosexuals should be, should be killed, that's what he said. The same Bible that he is using, the same scripture that he is using to say that gay peoples should be killed is the same Bible they use to enslave African Americans when they put them on a slave ship in Africa and brought them over here to the United States. The same Bible that he is using is the same Bible that was utilized to bring down the Nat Turner slave revolt. So let's be very clear here. When these individuals like him, like James Dobson, get up there and they spew their hate and they spew their judgment, remember the Bible says, judge lest you, don't judge lest you be judged. He says, don't pick the speck out of your brother's eyes when you got a log in your eye. That's what the good book says. That's the writing in the red. And let's remember who Jesus surrounded himself with. Mary of Magdalene. <laughs> right? Who was a pro who, who, who all, all history sort of indicates the fact that she could have been a, a harlot or a prostitute. But he loved her. All the same. Matthew the tax collector. We can go on and on and on and see who Jesus utilized. Rahab, the prostitute who saved the people of Israel. We can go on and on. I can, we, can, we can play this game all day. So when you see people like Roy Moore use this language to put down pre-K. Then pre-K is the ideal that if we get kids early and we teach them not about doctrine or state about, we teach them their ABCs. We say, here's how you count to 10, and here's A, B, C, D, and here's how you say dog. You spell dog D-O-G. That's not state control. That's what you call education, right? And look around the world at other Christian nations. Remember, Christianity was founded in Italy, right? Christianity, that's what was really Rome, the Catholic Church. They have free pre-K over there. Okay? The Bible is written by King James. That's the United Kingdom. That's England. They got free pre-K over there too. So don't sit here and sop this stuff up and believe that this is the way that the Bible says we should go and follow people like Roy Moore.